detector building. This event is an Ardu essentially it's an Arduino project. You will be building a temperature sensing device that oh it's salinity this year. Okay. Thank you for the correction. I didn't have a chance to read the rules, but this was what it was last year. And for salinity, it will be very, very similar. And in fact, it will be very similar. Same variable resistances. So just this is keep in mind, this is from last year. Everything I say will hold in for this year as well. So the object of last year's detector building was to build a temperature sensing device that will accurately measure and display temperatures between zero and 75 degrees Celsius. And at the competition, they'll give you four samples of water and they'll ask you to measure their temperature and they'll record it and test and test you on the accuracy. So to be competitive at regionals, you need to be somewhere within one degree Celsius. At states, you need to drop it down to half a degree Celsius. And at nationals, it's within 0.2 degrees Celsius. So it's very precise. And the way this kind of contraption works like this Arduino thing is you have right here, you have a temperature sensing probe. And this is a fancy piece of electronics. It's kind of, it's a resistor, but it's temperature sorry, its resistance changes with temperature. So if you dunk it in hot water, it will have a high resistance. If you dunk it in cold water, it will have a low resistance. And this can be used, or this can be detected or read out by the microcontroller here. The microcontroller lives in a world of electronics and it can sense a change in resistance quite easily. So the microcontroller reads out the resistance from this thing called a thermistor. And it runs some calculations to make sure, well, to convert it from the resistance or voltage value into temperature. And once it has a temperature calculated, it will display it on the calculator's display. And it will also run an output to these three LEDs, which are an indicator of, is this water hot? Is it cold? Or is it very cold? Something like that. And I guess to give you a broader sense of what Arduino is, I wanted to show you a little video of cool beginner level Arduino projects. So we'll watch this at two times speed because it's kind of, because it will, we will still understand everything. So here you see a little robot and it can follow the wall. So once it will approach the wall, it will make a turn times two. So yeah, it can follow the wall quite nice. And the next one we have is you can make a, you can kind of hook up a joystick to make motors control. So this is kind of like a robotic arm. You can make a lot of stuff out of these things. And this is just a toy example. The next one we have is a temperature sensor. Wow. Who would known? So this is a quite a popular type of thing people like to do with electronics. So you can see as a person squeezes this temperature probe, the temperature increases. Oh, and this is also a very classic example. It's a line following robot. So it looks at the line marking and it makes sure to drive and keep the line between its wheels. And it works quite well. Uh, the next one is have just normal alarm. And we can't hear it because I'm muted, but there's a buzzer going on right now. And finally, another cool one is you can you have quite you can get quite fancy with these. You can make a cell phone controlled robot. So you dial in a number and your robot drives forward, goes back, rotates, etc. Sound cool to you? Well, I hope there are a lot of projects like this and they're quite fun and affordable. There are Arduinos, these little things that um, you have seen powering all of these projects. They're very versatile and you can use them to make a variety of mini robotics themed projects. So this event is kind of like an um, introduction to electrical and computer engineering. 
So the process you'll go through for this event is you'll start with a simple circuit. You'll have some resistors, you have a battery, and you can calculate the voltages and currents everywhere. And that's great. However, the next step is you'll have to go out and buy these components. So you'll have to go shopping online or in person, or it's better to buy them on this online store called DigiKey. I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about this if you attend the workshop. So when you're buying these electronic components, you need to make sure that it's correctly, it's appropriately chosen. Like you have to choose a resistor or that won't be burned out by the huge currents going through your device, for example. Because if you buy something that's too small or tiny, it won't be able to handle the currents. So it's just, it will fail. And then once you've chosen all of these electronic components like uh, LED, maybe a couple of resistors here and there, it's time to build the circuit straightforward. If you have a schematic, then building a circuit should be easy. Then it's programming the Arduino. So let me explain what an Arduino is. It is a small computer and you can write a program that looks like this on your PC and then send it to this Arduino via USB cable. And once the Arduino has loaded the program, it will execute it. And as part of this program, you can have it output some sort of number, you can have it controlling motors and etc. as you've seen in the video previously. Now, maybe you haven't done any programming. In this case, it will be useful and instructive to teach you kind of the basic things programming can achieve. And showing you a couple of examples. It's quite simple. You just need a little bit of like a bit of practice with it and then you'll have it going. Now, when you're choosing these electronic components, the way you know if the electronic component is right for you is using something called a data sheet. A data sheet is like a documentation for an electronic part. So engineers know what to buy, what, they, what to expect when they buy it. And these are very important because if you have a constraint that your device must handle 50 amperes of current, then if you take a look here, this device, this transistor can only handle up to 30 amperes. So if you run 50 amperes through it of current, it will burn. So we can't choose it. It's not fit for our application. And there are a lot of more useful information here for more detailed applications. And for special specific applications, all of these numbers matter. It's important to characterize or describe how your device performs so other people know what to expect when they buy it. And to give you a practical example, just as you need to buy a right-sized shoe that's a good fit on your foot, you need to buy a right-sized transistor, which will work for you. Now, if we go back, remember that we were asked with collecting, we were asked with measuring the temperature of some water. Now, we're not actually measuring temperature. The thermistor right here, this thing, what happens is it changes the resistance through the of this thermistor changes. So we're not we're not just magically getting 75 degrees Celsius coming through the wires. We have a resistance and the fact that it changes with temperature can allow us to make a guess as to what the temperature is when we measure it. So let's say you gather a heap of data right here, make a table, you measure the voltage, which you can get through with Ohm's law, and the temperature with the thermometer of the water that you've obtained this measurement for. And you repeat it for a couple of times and great, you have a table. So we know that if we get a voltage of 0.63, then the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, or so it would seem. But what if we get a temperature of 0.5 degrees Celsius? It's not on the table, what do we do? This is where statistics comes in. We perform data analysis to make something called a trend line or a line of best fit, as otherwise known. 
This is an imaginary line that is supposed to describe all of the data points as closely as possible. So this is a generalization from all of your points and you can use it to interpolate between these known values. So for example, we can construct this line and use it to predict intermediate values, like let's say 0.5. We know we can go up at 0.5 volts and know that it's about like two degrees Celsius or something like that. So we've solved the problem using simple linear regression. And this also allows us to make some sort of formula so we can plug in a number for voltage and get the output in Celsius. So that's great. However, statistics also offers us insight into how good your device is working. For example, let's look at this detail. Suppose that instead of your measuring po measurement points lining up on a line nicely like this, you have them all scattered like that. So um, yeah, so they're all scattered. That's a big problem because what this really means is that there's a lot of random variability in your measurement points. So for example, the temp this temperature right here is either this voltage here or that voltage there. It's not quite clear because they're all so fuzzy. And a device, sorry, I'm gonna keep zooming in here. A device that has low variance, so as little randomness as possible, is ideal because you're not going to be confused as to whether the value you're getting is precise or not. So for example, if the device is poorly built or if it's not calibrated well, it won't be precise enough to settle on a particular measurement. And that means you're not going to be able to report the measurement as precisely as a competing, a competing team would be. So as you make iterations on your design, as you make improvements, your goal is to increase accuracy or reduce variance and bring it something from a smeared out curve like this to something nice and sharp like that.